Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wiki Tree Livecast and our Wednesday reveal. We have Claire here that's on the side next to me. And we just put in a, just a really, really intense week of research on hers. And then, um, of course, Maureen Taylor is our upcoming week. We'll be working on her branches this week. And so she's below me here. And I know we're all excited to um, get started here and see what's going on. So first, I'm just going to give a quick um, thing on what Wikitree is, in, in case you don't know and you're new here. Wikitree is a community of genealogists who are working together on a single family tree. In other words, we collaborate to grow an accurate global tree that connects us all, and it's free. The Wikitree Challenge is our year-long event and part of our year of accuracy, where each week a team of Wikitreeers takes on a genealogy guest stars tree, and we collaborate to make it more complete and more accurate than anywhere else. Our goal is to improve the accuracy on Wikitree, add more family connections, and make more friends, and we definitely have done that. Um, and I wish the captain could have been here, Claire, for your week, but I think she's probably just so exhausted at this point. Um, everybody just went went nuts this week working on this and did an incredible job. And every time I think I can't be, you know, more impressed with the work that people wow. do than they do something like this. Wow. So I did pray for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> Yeah, and I and I will point out, which I usually do at some point each week, you know, what we consider our brick wall isn't necessarily your brick wall. So, um, you know, if we're working on certain lines for what we call a brick wall, it's the first ancestor we got to that wasn't on the tree that we started with as a basic tree. And after we get done with the reveal and, and show you the discoveries that we found, you'll see what I mean about how much that, that grew this week. Um, and then every ancestor beyond that, of course, is just icing on the cake. So, um, you know, it's you may just not have gotten back to that ancestor yet, or, you know, you may have had the information on your computer and we can't see it. So, uh, but people worked especially hard and uh, really, really did an incredible job this week. So we are going to go ahead and start out with LZR Breeson and he happens, oh, Omar, happens to be on the same MTDNA line as two of our members. Oh, wow. And it, yeah, and actually the same as Karen Lowe's grandfather. Now, she's one of our Wikitree Challenge captains, so if you ever want to talk to her about that, she's she's readily available. And Wikitree's DNA tools, of course, allow us to find information about these ancient lines without even having to recruit. So then to go above and beyond that and recruit those cousins, you know, to add to all of the paper trails that you all have on those ancestors is just incredible. And you'll see in a minute another profile that really had some um, great DNA information showing. And let's go ahead and go into that first line. Now, Joseph Vignola, Fiola, however, which way it's spelled in the different records, they really did want to break that, that brick wall down for you, and they couldn't. Um, you know, one thing I do like about Wikitree, though, is the ability to leave research notes and to format a lot on a profile. So we can put documents on there. We can put a lot of narrative. I personally like to put narrative, um, you know, where we pull everything we can out of the records so that that person is a person person again and um, also have those research notes so you know the research log is basically built into the profiles and you will see that on some of the ones that were especially tough that we either broke the brick wall or didn't either way so that you know what they looked at but with him they said that his surname was actually not of Hungarian origin and he was likely a descent of one of the many nationalities who assisted in ending the auto Ottoman occupation of Hungary. So of his six children, two of them, Joseph and, and John Baptiste, are known to have married a native woman. And one of them, Guillaume, most likely married a Matisse woman. Now, Guillaume's branch of the family became known as Bailon. So it's not the Vignola at all. Huh. And yeah, that was that's an interesting. I don't have any of, of this name. information. All I have is just his name. So that's more than I had before. 
And we did try, uh, you know, you see the documents here, and this is actually a document uh, that he had to sign. We we do try and put some of the documents on the profiles, uh, but on the profiles where you don't see them, if the document is accessible and not copyright protected, um, they will they can be on the profile. If they are copyright protected, we still link to them, so you can go to those documents and actually see the information that we got out of them. So those will all be in the sources section. Now on his, there was a uh, notarial act between the notary Jacques Collin and he made a donation to his wife, Madeline Prue, in 1783. And he gave his origin as Hungarian there, um, his nativity. And he said he was age 29, so we did definitely get a, a better set on his age. And the act is a mutual donation between the spouses. And so, we may not have broken down that brick wall, but on those particular lines, there are now 32 ancestors beyond wow. Generation 8 that are new. 32 of them. Those are all brand new ancestors I didn't have before. That is cool. And then still on this line. Now, sometimes, you know, and we talked about how, you know, you find all these neat little tidbits about people. And sometimes just the little details that you find are interesting to read about. So here we have Robert, who migrated from France to Quebec. In 1666, he was living with his wife and two children. A year later, he also had seven cattle and 15 arpents, which is parcel size of land. So he was growing after he migrated there. And then in 1681, he had eight children living with him. His oldest son was a carpenter. And he also had one gun, six horned beasts, and 20 arpents of land. So, you know, it's just fu fun to find those things that are a little bit different than what you would see in records of another country. You definitely would not see that in the U.S. Census. Nope. And now on the Marie Susie line, it was really, really fun to see all the connections made. And you'll see what I um, what I mean once you actually get to do that deep dive out there and look, Claire. But once they made the connections to those older ancestors, some of these lines just went way back. Oh, now wow. we have, yeah, we have Pierre Julien Fortin, which is your seventh great grandfather. And that uh, on the left is, of course, just taking the steps uh, right. to get back to him. He was born in 1669. He married Marie Gertrude Houdon in 1697. And the image of their marriage is actually on their profiles. So their oh, actual wow. marriage document. That's now, Pierre, cool. yeah. Pierre had 11 siblings and then 13 children of his own. And each one of those children has a birth, marriage, and death record linked if it was available. And, um, yeah, there were a lot of large families in your branches. Let me tell you, there was a lot of them. It was fun. And beyond this, now everybody, of course, in orange is ninth generation or later. Those are all new. Plus, there's 33 more ancestors beyond those oh, wow. that you can't even see. That's amazing. That just yeah. blows my mind. Uh, just don't oh. just just know that my my father was one of 17 so <laughs> <laughs> nothing so, changed so yeah so you still are having those uh those yeah, towards families, big yeah. families i know i was talking to some of the other night i was like it looks like i'm working on my dad's side of the tree <laughs> my dad's <laughs> side's like that you know if they only have seven kids you're like okay who died the wife or the husband because i gotta find another marriage now <laughs> yeah that's beautiful and so um, he, here is where I was talking about. And of course, on the left is just still the names. But down there, that seventh great grandfather, Pierre Fortin, on his profile, when you look, Claire, you're going to see all of those uh, people that have taken DNA and added their kit numbers to, to WikiTree. Oh, and wow. so those are all actually possible cousins just off one ancestor that you can compare your DNA to now and, you know, and see what the, the match is and, and further prove those lines um, a lot. You have some really heavy DNA uh, tested cousins. So That's really wonderful. fun to find when you get out there, you know, and instead of like, okay, I won't say the site with the trees and the leaves but instead of there where you have to go look at dna separately and you know and see who your possible cousins are and then you're yeah. like oh they don't have a tree i can't you know i wonder who we match to no this is individually done on 
on each of your ancestors. Your DNA shows up on all of your ancestors. Other people that have taken kit shows up on the direct line only. And this way, when you get to those outer ones, um, you know, or even closer, you can see who the people are that are also showing up as a, a possible match to that person. So wow. really amazing tool. Now here was um, on Marie oh, Florentine. Was another one of my one of my brick walls. <laughs> and this one, uh, Greg Clark worked on Savant Bernard, and yeah. this is your sixth great grandfather, of course. And he's I don't know if you know he suffered tragedy early in life. Now his first wife was Marie Francois Boyry, and she actually drowned with four other people just a few months after their marriage. They were newlyweds. Um, which is just incredibly sad. And they said that they went ahead and just buried them all in the same gravesite the next day, uh, you know, which, I mean, that's, that's a logical that thing to do. Yeah. But, and it was just bad weather. I mean, it was just a freak, tragic, you know, accident, but he married a second time and that's your direct ancestor to Marie Fournier. Her parents were both deceased when they married, but her brother and several brother-in-laws attended the wet wedding. Now, they lived a long and presumably loving life with both dying within a day of each other, which, oh. you know, you hear about, but it really just like settles in when, oh, you, wow. when you see it with one of your own. Within a day, less than a day apart, they died. And so they were both buried on the 31st of December in 1758. And they said that they had many neighbors and friends attended the funeral. They had a lot of friends and family and they had been married for 23 years. Wow. Yeah, that's just, that's incredible. I love finding those, you know, those, those bits right. that really help you feel like you know someone. Now here we have someone on the plant line and this one was a, a marriage that was a little bit unusual. This is Pierre Bissonnette's second marriage. And it was annulled when they found out that he left a wife behind oh, in France. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, sometimes those naughty ones are the only reasons we find extra records. But it did turn out that they found out about the wife back in France. And so they wound up annulling the second marriage. And then he, he did actually wind up marrying a third and final time after they finally decided his first wife was really dead he was allowed to marry so he you know he he married the third wife and they had a, a long marriage and you know and uh, yeah it's just interesting though that all that happened and there are now 24 new direct ancestors oh, wow. passed yeah that's a lot of ancestors yeah. And, and these are direct when we list them, you know, we still, we get in there and we want to do the whole family approach. We add all the kids, you know, you see the siblings. Um, if we're having a hard time with a brick wall, we might build out a little bit laterally just to see, you know, if we can find out who these witnesses are to the marriages and whatnot. But yeah, definitely some big families and a lot. This one was huge. This one was massive. And because you, there were such established lines already on WikiTree, and, you know, some of our jet comps came from a long time ago that are still on there back in the day. Yeah. And so some of them, may, you know, you may come across the occasional profile that, that hasn't been completed since it was first uploaded. But for a large part, those, those much older ones, projects have taken them under their wing and, you know, and they'll develop them fully. And so if you can get out far enough to where you start connecting to these lines, it just rockets you. And that's what the Ruel line did. Now, Marie Anastasi Roll had a, an odd little uh, happening with a marriage in her family, too. Now, her sister was Marie Delphine Plant, who married their maternal uncle, Pierre okay. Onassine Gosselin. So dispensation was uh, obtained for the first to second degree of consanguinity. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's unusual. Yeah, it really is. You know, and it makes you wonder what the circumstances were that they went ahead and, and dispensed that and allowed mm -hmm. them to marry. It had to have been something a little bit drastic, I would think. I would but, think so, yeah. Yeah. But once these were connected, um, this one actually added hundreds Oh and I mean, gosh. hundreds of direct ancestors behind it. And there's so many that go back, you know, back to the, um, 
15th, 16th century. Now there's oh, wow. one like Robert um, Sarah Bruce Commercy. He was your 17th great grandfather. Oh and my goodness. Was, and he was born in 1400 in France. So cool. That is awesome. They are so fun to, you just get lost. You just want to go back, you know, and read through all the profiles. <laughs> oh, wow. And, you know, here is what I'm talking about. There's so many ancestors, you don't even know who to look at first. Right. And, um, you know, there's some like Zachary Claustier, which you see on the left. He yeah. is one of those that the projects have taken on. So they've done a lot of work on him. He has a beautiful profile. Um, you know, he has pictures. He has a lot of nice oh, wow. narrative. He was a carpenter by profession. And one of the interesting things in his life was actually due to his father. Now, he migrated to Canada in 1634 with his father, who was a master carpenter. And then they brought his wife and four of their children over uh, a year later. Now he had signed a contract with this Robert Gifford for three mm -hmm. years, you know, of servitude in exchange for half the land that he cleared. So he would clear Robert Gifford's land and then he would get half. And then, um, you know, he'd get food and, and board in the meantime. And then he'd get two cows. <laughs> as long as Robert had at least four cows, the contract said he got two of them. <laughs> And then if he built a house for Robert, he got an additional amount of parcels at the end of the contract. Well, something happened at the end. And so Zachary Sr. actually finished out his servitude, but he failed to complete all of his obligations. And so it actually wound up in the courts and, oh, you know, wow. they have some of that transcribed or attached and it, it drug out until 1646 when they actually found, you know, on behalf of Robert Gifford. Wow. Now, Zachary Jr. lived to the age of 87. His wife died three years later, and they had re they had raised six children with all but one of them reaching the age of adulthood. So back in that time in the rugged wilderness, you know, it's just amazing. Now oh, here we have, cool <laughs> I know there's some fun ones in there. Um, Seraphin rule. And I was really hoping that we could find some pictures that were actually his carriages, but we couldn't. Um, but these are actually from the location, like where he was about. So, you know, you, it could be. And for the right timeline, he was your second great grand uncle. So not a direct one, but he was born in 1847 in Quebec. Now he married his wife in New Hampshire. So I'm not sure what the story is behind that one. But he was back in Quebec by 1881 when he was living there with Sophie and their eight children. So small family, <laughs> only eight. Yeah. And Seraphim was a carriage manufacturer. So he actually opened a wheelwright and carriage making shop when he moved to Massachusetts. And he had that shop there for 20 years. And, you know, he died in 1920 in Massachusetts. He was well respected. Um, a lot of people, you know, knew about him and his work there. So that was just kind of fascinating. That's fascinating. And something to follow through on if you ever want to, you know. No, I know. Can... It's definitely something to follow through. This would make some good stories for, for my kids for Christmas presents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm there's. Thinking, I'm thinking, you know. <laughs> there's some great ones. We have now, a lot of young children. Um, for Marie's great grandmother's sister, Adeline Rule, moved from with her husband from St. Charles to Bellachaz to Fall River, Massachusetts. And in the obituary of her husband, Jean-Baptiste LeBlanc, it says he was regarded as a pioneer of the French colony in this city. So, you know, it was kind of fun. We didn't have as many uh, the obituaries and whatnot that we normally would um, find since we were all focused on, on Quebec here. But they were still, the team members were still able to find some of them. And it's always nice to know that they were well regarded. And It is. It is a good feeling to know that. Oh, my goodness. Or oh, that line. Woo! Now, this one, Aaron Littlefield, the seventh great-grandfather, 
of yours was taken by Native Americans. And they really don't make it sound like it was a bad thing. But I mean, if you think about it, you know, you have to really give him kudos for growing up to be a strong person, um, along with his mother and two of his sisters to Canada. It says he was nine years old, but some of the uh, accounts of this actually say he was six or seven years old. So just uh -huh. depending on, you know, who was guessing at his age. Now, they said that, um, you know, when they would take these these children like this, they could they figured they could get really good rewards for him. So they would take them off and they would turn them over to the people that were interested in and, in, you know, turning them to their their mode of religion and whatnot. And yeah, but, you know, he just moved on from it. He was later baptized in Quebec as Pierre Augustine Littlefield, where he married and settled. And, you know, he just led a normal life. So he was granted letters of administration for his father Moses's estate in 1727, you know, meaning that his family must have all been uh, reunited at some point. At so, some point, yeah. Yeah, really cool. I've done but, research for, for, for um, a client who's from the family's from Kennebuck. So that's kind of cool. Cool. Okay, let's see who we have next. Now, here is on the throw line. Yeah. This was fun. He was a broom manufacturer. And they actually found several. I don't know if you've seen any of them articles. Uh, you'll see the notes on his profile about it. He ran a saloon in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, where he sometimes skirted those liquor laws. He was a, uh, yeah. Was he hanging out with your kin, Maureen? <laughs> um, I'm thinking Claire and I have some lines that overlap. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> and he actually did have a tragic death though. He died from injury sustained when he fell into the store cellar. Um, they said his funeral was the largest in the French community at the time, attracting more people than they could even accommodate in the church. There were 43 carriages in his funeral pr uh, procession. And if I remember correctly, his uh, sons were the ones that bore his casket. Oh, but wow. um yeah and but there's some interesting tidbits about how you know they found him with alcohol that wasn't supposed to be there or you know he turned his liquor <laughs> license over to somebody else but then they got in trouble too and so yeah, a lot it, of friends for a good reason i guess <laughs> yeah I, i'm thinking he was real happy with a lot of people there <laughs> he was keeping them happy now his his card in the U.S. naturalization pe petition state that he was born in Canada in 1830. He entered the United States in November 1876 in Vermont and was naturalized as a U.S. citizen in the circuit court at Providence on the 8th of December 1888. And wow. we had a much more distant one on that line. And they had Jean-Lucas Schmidt, which was your first fifth great grandfather and while his grandparents were not found and they looked they looked so hard too but that name is so common you know mm -hmm. and then without having like a very specific area it was hard but they did find out that he was an officer de roy so he was a king's officer and that he was acting as an officier de roy during the American Revolution. And he oh. was taken prisoner in 1775 with 20 other officers. And in 1795, he actually received what um, equaled 50 gold coins as a pension for his service to this country. Well, I, I could join the DAR. Yay! <laughs> She's like, woo! I've never I got been able one. to do that before. That's cool. Yeah, that's really neat. Wow. They did fabulous lot. They did fabulous work. That's all I got to say. These guys were just, I'm telling you, they were on fire this week. They were just on fire. They just kept finding stuff, you know, and then Cheryl would get them really motivated again. And they go, oh, we got to go find some more. <laughs> you know, and she's like, I don't know. You guys are almost up to this record now. And they'd be like, oh, we got to beat that record. Okay. <laughs> they found so much stuff. It just, it's crazy incredible. Um, they broke all our records this year. So we had a um, Alberic Thoreau, which is, of course, a paternal great grandfather, so not that far out. But one of the team members was researching the fact that he was employed by Lorraine Mills in Pawtucket for 23 years as a loom fixer, you oh. know, which is is not a common occupation. 
he was also well known and highly regarded. Now, his brothers, George and Charles, were majors in two of the French ceremonial militia organizations in the city. And when he died there, there was a military style funeral attended by about a thousand people. Wow. A thousand. Can you imagine? And several of your ancestral family members were active in these social and charitable organizations in New England. So once again, gives you really more insight into who your ancestors were. Definitely a lot of New England blood there, right? <laughs> Where I'm, con I'm convinced that your family knew my family. I'm convinced. Well, we knew of this. It. Yeah, but we, I mean, we've known each other so long. I'm sure there's a link. Well, by the time we get done with Marines Week, we'll probably be able to tell you. <laughs> That'll be fabulous. Well, here's now, my he, my Indian ones. Yes. On my so, mother's side, uh, she's my eight. I have an eighth great grandmother that's Indian. Yeah, and the researchers that looked at that said, um, you know, she may have been part of North America back to time immemorial, you know, before we became anything and, and just the indigenous people were here and likely is related to Lewis Hebert, who was part of the attempted settlement of Port Royal in 1606. Now he permanently settled into Canada upon arriving in 1617. He was the first apothecary to settle and practice in North America. And he was the King's attorney so, you know, if you want somebody else big to tie into, that gives you another avenue or research is finding that that connection. Because we just frankly, we never have enough time in a week. You know, we're like, oh, we're going to get all this done. And then at the end of the week, we're like, no, <laughs> we can't right. end it's it yet. I do know it's from the Algonquin tribe, Algonquin nation in the Abenaki tribe. So the, adding to that information with this, that's fabulous. I love the symbol, too. I've never had that. Yeah, there's some really uh, cool stuff on the profile when you get a chance to look at it. Yeah, and by the way, we all do this. We do the, um, you know, cousin matches. And so we, <laughs> we we have this whole list going. I'll send it to you and we're done. But we have this whole list going on who's sixth cousin twice removed and who's 12th cousins. And, That's and fabulous. Especially the people that have the Phil, Phil DeRoy stuff already in their lines. Definitely had a lot of common ancestors. Now, one of the things that we also did notice along the way uh, was twins appearing here and there and there, and not just on one line, you know, where you usually see it uh, just coming down on one ancestral line. So this was a lot of fun. And these are actually only ones that were marked as twins, uh, meaning that, you know, well, for one thing, they're the only direct twins that are marked that way. So you still have a lot of other family that might be, you know, a great uncle or something like that in the family line that might have twins. Uh, but we only looked at who the direct ones were. Right. And not all of them are marked. You know, not everybody knew to put them in the category as a twin. But this was just kind of fun to find. So, you know, we had Joseph Guillaume named after his maternal grandfather. He was born in 1727. His twin was stillborn, but mentioned in the baptismal record. And he's your fifth great grandfather on the Murrow wow. line. Another one, of course, on the Marie Louise Ruel, you know that line. She was born in 1735 with her twin, Marie Genevieve. We have Jean-Baptiste Boudreau, your sixth great-grandfather, who was born in 1683 in Port Royal with his twin, Claude. Uh -huh. wow. Genevieve Lemelin, another sixth great-grandmother on the Audette line, was born in Saint-Laurent in 1694 with her twin, Francois. Cool. Anne Rouleau, eighth great-grandmother on the Limoges line, born in 1662 with her twin, Guillaume. So there we have a male and female. And then Pierre Testu de Tilly, an eighth great grandfather, was born in 1635 in Panzol, France with his twin, Marie. That's amazing. My mother's, um, she has a aunt, set of aunts that were twins. Oh, wow, that's great. So that was amazing, yeah. So. There are twins in the family here and there. And my I have cousins that are twins, first cousins. 
Yeah. And I think if you, like I said, if you start looking back through the aunts and uncles and cousins that, you know, are connected to your branches on WikiTree, you'll probably find a lot more. You probably will. Yeah. Now here, of course, we were looking at, at Oh yeah. Fielder. Somebody said I had the King, some King's daughters. That's cool. I've been right. trying to find those for a while. <laughs> yeah. Chris F. Chris Ferriello was keeping us updated during the week. Okay. She's connected to this many now. Now, and at the start of it, when they were looking, uh, and that's another one of the cool wiki tree uh, gadgets that we have tools that, at our resource is that we can go ahead and look at, you know, Magna Carta. We can say, oh, how many people do we have that are Phil Roy that we actually match? Um, different things, you know, you can say U.S. presidents. How many of them am I related to? Now, the Phil de Roy was, of course, approximately 800 young French women who immigrated to New France between yeah. 1663 and 1673. And they were designed, it was designed to boost New France's population, both by encouraging the male colonizers to settle there and by promoting marriage. And so basically, if you have ancestors in that area, then you're going to trace back to some of this Phil de Roy, which is what Chris F. kept telling us. But when you, when he started counting, how many you were connected to um it was 77 and now at the end of the week checking the last time i checked with them it was 91. wow that's a lot wow. yeah i i didn't even know i had one <laughs> <laughs> one i guess that's cool now, now you've got 91 to look at you i'm oh, looking yeah. forward to that oh Here's 20 c 2 r what's that yeah, she's um, your 20th cousin twice removed. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, hey. We're doing it. Angie is seventh cousin oh, seven twice cousins. removed. That's cool. I know we had uh, here. Yeah, we have several that are sixth cousins. Wow, that's wonderful. Claire, we're seventh cousins, somebody wrote in the comments. Oh, well, see, I told, <laughs> we knew that we were related all these years. We just never knew. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch next week now to find out how we're related. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. We'll have to do a special slide just for that. <laughs> yeah. All, all these the genealogists who are related to each other. All in the Carrigan Regiment, yep. Yeah. Yes, and of course that was a unit that was formed by merging two other regiments in 1659, so way back there. Now they were led by the new governor, Danielle de Remy, and the lieutenant general. Um, there were approximately 1,200 of these men from three different locations that arrived in New France in the middle of 1665. And all of those listed on that slide, Claire, are ancestors of yours. And so that was, you know, a really strong showing of military presence. Now, here is what we started with. Uh, we were talking about this a little bit before we went live. And, yeah. you know, what we had is we uh, went out from the eighth generation. Now, of course, anything ninth and back we were excited about and beyond that was icing on the cake, but our people just kept going. So we had some people that focused on those closer lines. We had people that were really um, experienced in the Quebec records that went back and looked at those. And, you know, all those little dots you see along there are brick walls, our ancestors that they found. Now, it should actually be higher this week. We did have, um, I'll give a little bit of hands, uh, kudos to Danielle Liard. She worked, but she didn't work actually within the challenge. She just thought it'd be fun to help out. And so, you know, her and a few other people were just working for the fun of it, or it would even been bigger. But this gives people an idea of what we started with as far as WikiTree relatives. So this is what was on your branches, Claire, on WikiTree when we started. And of course, that's a nine generation chart. And this isn't your primary tree. So we didn't expect to see a lot on there, you know, but you already had a couple of branches that people had grown out because you had mutual ancestors. <laughs> And so that was our starting point. And just the amount of work, once again, that people did within the team this week was incredible. It just was amazing. And so this is what your nine generations on WikiTree looks like now. I mean, they just broke every record that we had for this entire year and wow. kept going. Now, on the left, of course, is that big Nala line uh, that we couldn't get through. 
on the top there up in the middle now that was one that was uh they were trying to get through nicole adams spent a lot of time leaving notes and trying to look that up and and she thinks that that marie lamy uh might have been illegitimate just because of the fact that she wasn't using a surname in any of her records you know oh. the kids and whatnot and so she left you some pretty detailed notes about what uh, who her parents could possibly be and, you know, what she looked at and what the very variation is in the records. And then on the very right where we had Jean DeGuy, and I'll tell you what, we didn't even realize that we had this, this filled out, filled out until today. <laughs> and so, yeah, one of our, our top uh, experts went out there and he was like, oh, I got to see if I can fill these in or not. And so that little white slot on the right is actually filled now. Like he oh, just wow. found, yeah, he just found the the parents in time. I, I didn't even have time to update my chart. That's and okay. so that's, you know, that's your nine generations. And then I'm going to show you something even more incredible. And I never do this. I never pull a 10 generation because nine is already really impressive. And I'm already really jealous of your nine generations fan chart because mine looks nothing like that <laughs> <laughs> oh. and that's your 10. oh my gosh oh. that is amazing right that is just i mean it's beyond words you just that look at that and words. you're like yeah. wow i mean just and again wow you know and people were making jokes this week about how you know their spouses were forgetting what they look like and i know um, you know, how they promised that they, you know, slow it down a little bit when the week was over with, but everybody got so caught up in getting this stuff done and finding this information. That's, a, they that's just, fabulous. Yeah, they just blew everything right out of the water. And I think, well, let's see. We'll go ahead and do just a little bit about the collaboration and then I'll show you who our top scores were. Uh, okay. you know, because they definitely need to be acknowledged. Oh, for sure. And okay, so now collaboration is key during the challenge, and that's what WikiTree is all about, anyways. We collaborate. So one of the ways we do this during a challenge week is we use the spreadsheet like you see on the left. And when you get, you know, 25, it can be 35, 45 people. You had more than 33 people working this week, Claire, on your branches. So, wow. and some of them just, I mean, there was stuff going on around the clock. It was amazing. But when you get that many people, it's really easy to step on somebody's work or, you know, you wind up researching the same person. So we try and encourage people to list which profile they're working on. And that way we can all kind of spread out and go different ways and, and not step on anybody's toes. Now, on the right is the G2G forum. And that's our post, our genealogist to genealogist forum. And that's where you'll see um, the eight great grandparents that we mm -hmm. start from and we go beyond that because we don't work any closer than the great grandparents right and you'll see that uh, more people sometimes listed hey this is what i'm working on sometimes they said oh i got a brick wall honestly i'm i'm going to be honest with you here by the end of the week they weren't even listing their bounty points it was all going on in discord <laughs> they were just like oh i almost found oh i found the marriage of this one and they're so excited and everybody's cheering <laughs> and they never made it out to the the g2g to post it so oh, wow. um, i just i just marked their points down and we just moved on but you'll you'll see where some people were um, definitely chatting in there and people like Danielle that weren't participating in the discord part of it that had decided to go ahead and and post in the forum which is fine you know as, as long as we're all collaborating that's what matters and here is where I was talking about if you haven't used discord as a communications platform you've got to try it out now of course this used to be a, a gaming platform and it isn't now it's opened up to so much be so much more and they're so much more stable and reliable now and you know with our site being global we have people on a rant literally around the clock oh, because I know. when I yeah, when I'm sleeping, then, you know, England's getting up or we have people in Australia. We have people just everywhere. 
Um, you know, there's always somebody that's up doing something. And so this makes it nice that they can jump in and automatically see what people were working on last or talking about last. You know, we can say, hey, I need a translation for this or, hey, you know, who has a subscription to this site? I really want this obituary or this record. And, oh, cool. you know, we all get to pull our resources. And, you know, and sometimes the, we have people that just come in and go, hey, oh, I saw your guys' scores. Great job. You're doing great. You know, and cheerlead and hey that's just as important because it takes a village you know oh, yeah it does take a village to do this and that's why like maureen said another set of eyes is just the greatest thing it really is it really is a gift and i know you know we miss it we definitely miss it when, when it's not there oh so the top five wow I know. And so here are our top five. And while it's not all about the points, the point system does help keep people motivated and it helps us kind of gauge, you know, where we're at, what we're doing. And so we give points two ways. We give bounty points, which is our large one, 10 points for the first ancestor on each line that's found that was not on the primary tree that they started with. Yeah. And then they get individual points. Oh, they were loving this, Claire. They get individual points for everyone that's a nuclear relative within a oh, generation. Okay. So, you know, they find these families and they're like, well, he had 12 kids with his first wife and four <laughs> with his second wife. And they're like, score. Oh, cool. yeah. <laughs> there's, there's 16 points right there. That's better than bounty points, I know. you know? <laughs> So, yeah, it was just, That's it was great. a lot. And those can add up really fast. And I'll tell you, it may have changed. I'll tell you in a minute when we look at the actual scores. But I know Greg uh, Lavoie, they're one of our top performers and one of our experts this week. He added, last time I checked, 97 nuclear relatives. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot of people. I know. I know. I couldn't do it if I sat down on a week and tried, you know. I um, talked to Pat, and she was telling me it took her four weeks to go through just half of the stuff and she said she's only just recently finished some of them between other things but she said she spent four weeks and you broke so many brick walls it was amazing yeah it it takes a long time to finally get in there and that's not even researching that's just looking through what we did yeah. because we pulled together so many people to work on this and so here is our top five we had the powerhouses we had greg and greg rocking the house of course um they kind of went back and forth in first place greg clark won at the end <laughs> he made it in that top <laughs> one, one position but i'll tell you it was close and then we had nicole adams was in a very strong third uh, she did some amazing work this week cheryl your captain actually was right up there in the points too did a really incredible job and karen lowe um snuck kind of snuck on up in there with the bounty points that she found and you know but each and every person that worked on this was just did an incredible job and all of it helps you oh know and we God, do all the people I know. And we do keep a, this score sheet. Now, some of this isn't helping, you know, as far as like getting the bounty points for the, um, oh, thank you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They kept me busy. They kept me really busy, this really week busy with, the point. with the tracking. But, you know, here's a few other things that we track and it just kind of helps let people know, you know, where we are during the week. So the first column that you see are the total points. And that's everything they got us actual points, bounty and nuclear relatives combined. And so here's where you see those top five people and their tremendous scores. And then our record breaking total of 1,325 points in a week. Wow. Now, cre excuse me, creative ancestors, the number is unusually low on your week. And that's because there were a lot of uh, floating profiles out there and the families just weren't put together. Now, if our team members go, oh, I see that his father is, you know, I found the baptism record. These are his parents' names. And they find those profiles out floating or out attached to somebody else and they connect them. It's the same thing as if they created it. So, yeah, it is. So, to me, that would count. Yeah, so they still get the bounty points for it, yeah. but it makes the created ancestors look really unusual. And I know um, Chris F came in the room the other day, and he's in Discord room, and he's like, um, "I gotta ask, cause how do you have all these points, but you've only made one profile?" <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> "Yeah, you don't even want to know. You don't even want to know. It's actually harder the way they did it, you know, because if they were creating it fresh, they could make it perfect from the start. But to have to go find these other profiles and then clean up." 
somebody else's notes and then add sources, yep. you know, that prove it. It's a lot of work. And it's a lot. I know. Work. I know. I've pulled some apart from, from family search. It's a nightmare. It's yeah. a nightmare. It, it really is sometimes just that cleanup and it really, it makes wiki tree and those part of your branches look amazing. Now um, they've done so much. So the next column that we have is the created relatives. Now that's those nuclear relatives. So siblings or children and 391 of those were created this week. Oh, wow. Oh, and it looks like the other Greg kept going cause he's up to 103. <laughs> 103 nuclear relatives. Go, Greg. Go, Greg. Greg yeah, and Greg, I mean, you guys wow, are rock that's stars. Amazing. And then our bounty points, of course, that's the 10 points for each, uh, the first direct ancestor we get to. Now, if they find 12 other direct ancestors past that, that's still amazing, but we don't give them the points for that. They just get one point each if they, if they make it beyond them. And so these are all just for the brick wall, what we call the brick wall ancestors, a record breaking 920 points. So 92 wow. direct ancestors. And it's actually higher than that because of the people like Danielle that didn't sign up for the challenge and didn't want to, um, you know, be in the totals. She was actually finding some of those brick wall ancestors too. And so it really should have been high. It's just amazing. I, they just blew me out of the water. I could not believe it. Now profiles edited. And so this is unique profiles. Oh, that wow. were edited yeah, that's, this a lot, week. that's a lot of editing that Greg did. Oh, that's, wow. Yeah. Kudos to Greg and to the two Gregs. Wow. Yeah. I know they're amazing. Um, the total for the entire week was 1179 and now contributions. We, we all, our system naturally keeps track of contributions. So every time we go in and add a date, um, add a source, change something that needs fixing, write some narrative that's counted as a contribution. When we hit the save button and gives us one contribution oh, and wow. over this week's time with the 31 plus people that were working on your branches, 3,191 contributions were made. Wow. That's a lot. I know. That, Can you that is amazing. It's going to take me four months at least to get through that. <laughs> Maybe five. <laughs> I know I was trying to like skim and I couldn't even get through all the names. That's wonderful. That's just wonderful. Oh, Steven's saying that he didn't get to do as many transcription requests. Now, you know, when we talked about how we all kind of have our own special skills and our own resources, and Steven's usually one of our people that uh, that he does our will transcriptions. He's amazing oh. at it. He'll sit there and transcribe a four page will. He's just got the most patient, oh, you know, wow. and, and so a, that is a lot of patience. I get tired of doing those things. <laughs> yeah, I'll do an abstract. I'm like <laughs> bequest to the wife, these children, um, you know, but that's one of the things that we can just call out in discord and go hey steven are you around because i have a will for this person and he's like you know oh yay okay i'll do that and he's really great at it. now this week of course we didn't have a lot of wills because that's not something we found with a uh, quebec records but um i know that maureen has got some branches he'll be really excited to find and um it's just fun having those different resources And let's go back off of this. Yay, okay. Maureen. Yay. Hey, Claire. And so, so Claire, do you feel like we at least met your expectations? Oh, of... gosh, you went far exceeded my expectations. Do I get a copy of that stuff at all? You do. And I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to send you all kinds of goodies tonight. You wait and see. Oh, wow, <laughs> I've, got, I've got some of the documents for you. Um, the rest of them, you'll be able, like I said, they'll be linked on the profiles. You'll be able to pull them off and, you know, put them in your own records if you want to. I'll have the uh, spreadsheet that shows uh, where the bounty points were assigned at. Um, and then as the fan charts at the various, various steps and all kinds of oh, fun stuff. Oh, that's just awesome. So. That's awesome. I, I'm full of, I'm beyond gratitude and very humbled, to be honest with you. I'm just amazed. Uh, just would love to send out a personal thank you to everyone that participated. I mean, it means a lot to me because I, over the years, since, gosh, since the 80s, when I first started, I'm all, you know, I just I did my own. And then, uh, then all of a sudden, someone said, can you do this? Can you do that? And that was the end of my work. <laughs> so it's just been um, a labor of love for other people. So this is very much appreciated. 
Well, it was it was certainly our honor and our pleasure. And, you know, we have so much fun giving this gift to people. It's, it's like we get to give Christmas presents all year long. I feel like it's Christmas. I feel like it's Christmas. We are. Like each week, we're like, surprise. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much to everybody. And uh, like I said, I'd like to write a personal note to every single person. It was wonderful. They're amazing. Yeah, Cheryl says she's handing off the captain hat to Christine, who will be the captain <laughs> this week. <laughs> so thank you cheryl for all your work and karen Lowe and everybody just wow and then this i noticed that there was a dna connection with karen so that's even more so just amazing what you guys did is just i'm just grateful and i'm glad that maureen's going to have the same opportunity for them to break some of her brick walls that's great yeah we got some people that are already taking notes and looking looking forward to it <laughs> so <laughs> all right well do i leave and you speak to maureen or it's up to you, Claire. You can. I'm going to go ahead and talk to Maureen a little bit. You can stay or you can duck out and peek at your tree if you want. That's up I'm to gonna you. I'm going to do that and um, I'm going to wish Maureen and, and then maybe I can, you can send me a link and I can watch next week when you do hers. That would be wonderful. I will. I, I would will definitely do that. that. I think that, that I'd love to see the connections. Okay. Great. All right. You take care. Thank you for every, thank you from everybody. Bye cousin. Bye. Bye cuz. Okay, then. <laughs> there I am. There we are. Now, for anybody that doesn't know, um, Maureen is the photo detective, and they probably already recognize that title more than anything else, right, Maureen? Or yeah. definitely one of the biggest things. And pulling out of your information, it says you are a frequent speaker on photo identification. Your experience in photograph preservation, which is oh so important with not destroying those, those um, archives. You speak about family history at historical and genealogical societies, museums, conferences, and many other locations. You've authored several books and hundreds of articles. You've been featured in prestigious newspapers and magazines such as the Wall Street Journal, Better Homes and Gardens, New York Times. You've appeared on The View and The Today Show and just so much more. <laughs> There's just so much more going on. So did I miss anything that was really no. important? <laughs> and in her free time, she doesn't have free time. They never do. <laughs> the the ones that, that wind up trying to help anybody else, you never get back to your own tree. No. And yeah, and you don't have free time. <laughs> so, okay, we're going to go through a few of our standard questions. Now, what actually got you interested in genealogy? You know, I'm not really sure, but I know I was interested as, I think I was nine, because I can remember writing on a piece of paper. Uh, I only knew one of my grandparents. My father's mother is the only one that was still living when I was uh, growing up. And I kept asking her about her family. And I had this little piece of paper and I was trying to write it down. I was like, what's your father's name? What's your, you know, grandpa? She's like, my family is so boring. I'm not going to talk about it. Why don't we talk about your grandfather's family? And of course, you know how that goes. Yeah. No, nothing could be further from the truth of being boring. <laughs> they um, never are. are they? <laughs> but I, I don't know. I mean, we didn't talk a lot about family history, uh, but I was always interested in history, even as a little kid. So now who is your favorite ancestor if you had to pick one? I don't know if I can pick one, but I can say, I'm not sure they're my favorite because they're so troublesome, but I can say that I'm really fascinated by a lot of the characters on my father's side of the family. You know, if I had to pick someone that I admire, it would be uh, my great, uh, a great grandmother. And she had such hardships that I think about her life whenever things get tough and I think she made it. I can do it. Yeah. 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 Nothing's as hard as what they went through. Nothing. No. Now, when did you first discover WikiTree? Just a couple of years ago, but I have to say, and, and I'm sorry, I, I just like didn't get the concept. I was like, what is WikiTree and how does this work? And then, you know, I, I I'm busy. So I, hadn't had the chance to 
really focus on it, but seeing all of the challenges that you've been doing this year really piqued my interest. And so I started poking around a little bit saying, what is this all about? Yeah. Yeah, you guys are amazing, like amazing. We do try and have a lot of fun with it, you know, here and there where we can. And of course, to us, research is fun. It's it's not the work. It's that's our fun time. And some people, you know, when they're working their day job and that is their relaxing time, they go home and they and they wiki tree. But um, it's been a lot of fun doing the challenge. And, you know, even other than that, more more quietly is the projects that we have, you know, where you can go and participate and have people um, that you can talk to about the records you find or don't find or whatever. Uh, really an amazing community. So what are your current, like your biggest brick walls? Oh man, you guys have your work cut out for you. <laughs> <laughs> really, seriously. Um, my mom's side of the family, not so much. I mean, you know, it's French Canadian, so the records are good. But I do, before we get into sort of the brick walls on my dad's side, the sort of thing on my mom's side is a guy way back um, in the... It's supposedly he immigrated circa 1780. His name is Charles McDuff. Supposedly he was with the Brunswick Regiment. Um, maybe he came over during the revolution. Maybe not. I mean, I don't have a whole lot. I know he moves to Quebec from Limerick, Ireland. Um, and I have one generation in, in Limerick. Uh, but I, I just can't figure that little piece out. Like, why does he come and does he come with the regiment? Yeah. Um, on my dad's side, it's, it's, a, it's, it's tough. Um, you know, there's, hold on, I made a list. There's, there's Sarah Jane Taylor. Oh my goodness. Born about 1841 in Rhode Island. Claimed on her marriage record that her parents were William and Lydia. I can't that find could, it anywhere. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't expect a whole lot. I mean, I just really love the fact that you asked me to do, do this challenge and that I get another set of eyes to look at it. Um, there's John and Hannah Priest from New Hampshire. Uh, total dead end uh, with them. I have a line sort of sketched into my ancestry family tree, but I have no idea if it's really true. I haven't been able to prove it or disprove it at this point. Um, James Wilson, what a colorful character he is. Born 1837 in Connecticut, supposedly the son of Lewis and Laura of Connecticut. Connecticut records are terrible, but yeah. uh, I keep looking for him. Uh, it's He's a fascinating character. Like, oh my goodness, I've done so much research on him. But one of the really cool stories that came out of him and his life is they have a kid and then they don't get married for a whole year. So it's like she ran away with him. He's in the Navy. They have a kid. Then they get married. But they don't get married in Charlestown, Massachusetts, where they're living. They get married wow. in Salem, Massachusetts. And on the same day, I was really digging around this summer. And the same day, her sister takes a boat from New Bedford, I guess, and the two sisters get married in Salem, Mass. Oh, wow. It's the weirdest little thing ever. Um, well, maybe that's what she was waiting for, though, was... I, I have no idea, uh, but he was, he was a character for sure. She did not have an easy life um, with him. Yeah, he was colorful. <laughs> I'm still working. He was testified in a divorce case and I'm still waiting for those papers to come. I've been waiting six <laughs> months and I cannot wait another second. Uh, so those are my, you know, those are my major ones. And, you know, you can look at any line and you can find a dead end. Um, my mom's side, you know, supposedly there's a uh, French Royal from the Fille de Roy. I've only found one of those, but if there's that many, I've got to have more. Uh, I don't know. Uh, every, it, it took me forever and ever and ever to find the birthplace of my great grandmother on my father's side. And it turns out that even though they were living in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, she was buried in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And wow. because they lived there for like a minute. Yeah. 
Uh, and they bought this huge cemetery plot. There's like room for like 13 graves up there and there's five people buried. So it's like, well, they had plans, but I don't know. There's a lot of, lot of dead ends there. <laughs> anything, anything, guys, anything. I saw a message in the chat that somebody said, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint Maureen. You know, I can't be disappointed. The, the disappointment just isn't part of it. This is so exciting to see what you might do and uh, and what you might find. I, I, maybe you'll find nothing on my father's side, but you're bound to find things on my mother's side. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed, it's French. <laughs> and you, and I know you said um, you don't have a lot of pictures, but if there are pictures where we can use them. Yes, yes. I don't have, yeah, that's my big secret. Don't tell anyone, although here we are publicly. Shh. I'm the photo detective and I have hardly any family photographs, um, which is why I love everyone else's. And uh, I don't know who Helene Deport is, but I guess I will find out. No, no Thomases. Um, but you can use whatever there is in the tree. I, I don't have much, but if you need something else, you know who to call. Yeah. <laughs> Let me um, know. The captain will definitely reach out to you if anybody has any questions. Um, you know, you already know that you don't get to peek during the week. No, I'm you not going to peek, although you did tell me I was related to Helene DePore, so I might have to look. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, you'll get some email notifications that say like, oh, you need to complete this merge, two profiles together or whatever else, just ignore them because we, uh, the paid staff will go ahead and we'll take care of those for you just so we can get the week completed and keep it as smooth as possible. So um, don't worry about any notifications. Other guests have just gone ahead and have filtered them to go in a folder or something so that they, you know, aren't tempted to read and see who we're working on. Um, but, you know, if you think of anything else that you have a question about or wanted to point out, you can also reach uh, back out to either me or your captain, Christine, and we will look into it. Yeah, if they want, you know, access to a couple of the the uh, time, I use timelines when I do research. So if anyone wants access to a particular um, timeline on one of these brick walls, I'm, it's in a Google Drive folder, I can share it with you. Yeah, so just contact Christine if that's something you're interested in, and she'll make sure it gets done. Well, I think we are about to wrap it up. Unless you had any other questions, Maureen, or no, I'm just I'm just amazed at what you all do, and it's a wonderful community. I can't wait to see what you find. It is great, and we are honored to be able to work on your branches. You know, it's only been select people we've been able to feature this year, and it has just been so much fun, so much incredible fun. And I want to thank everybody out there that helped work on Claire's tree and that will be working on Maureen's tree this week. And thank you to the people watching or else we wouldn't be here. <laughs> you can you can check us out on wikitree.com for more information. Go ahead and like the video and subscribe if you want to receive alerts. And so I think we are done for the evening.